Hello everyone, my name's Lost and welcome back to episode 2. This time around we are going to get um, the basic logic of towers and also damage working. Um, I forgot to mention it last episode but um, I put the sprites in the description, the ones that we used in the first episode. I will do the same for this episode too. You'll find the tower and the projectile in the description. So, first of all, um, I'm just adding them to uh, to Game Maker. Uh, obviously, just sorting out the um, origin there. Now we're doing the tower projectile as well. Uh, now, you've got to be careful on this one a little bit because something I've just realised right now, and I didn't fix this in the upload, I've done the projectile the wrong way around. Um, so if you can edit the image within Game Maker itself and just flip it or mirror it horizontally, then then that'll fix itself. I believe I do that uh, later in this video. Uh, but yeah, I think you also want to be careful with this one um, because you're gonna have to change the origin once you've flipped it to the other side, and also you need to play with the collision mask, I believe, just a little bit uh, because this is gonna determine sort of you know. When it hits the player, all the all the minions when we when we create those, but not yet. Uh, and as well as the sprites, you need to turn them into objects. And same for the projectile. And great, there we go. So we now have both of our objects created. And also, we are going to need to create um, a parent player. Uh, now, this is going to be the parent for both, obviously, the character that we play, and also for the minions that we then have on our side. Uh, although, we're not creating minions in this episode. That's going to be later on. Just giving you the heads up so you can do this as well. Because this is going to be important when it comes to damage and targets and all that sort of stuff. So now we are just going to add the tower to the room. Um, in the next episode, I'll go about making the full map for you guys so that we can start adding, you know, sort of like get the towers in the proper positions. All we're doing right now is testing. Uh, that's That was the main focus of this video, just to get just to get the towers working correctly. Like, sort of getting the logic set up, you know? Um, but I put mine about there just to test. So that's all there was to that segment. Now um, we're going to get into code. We're now going to finally sort the logic out for this. So we need a create event, a step event, and an alarm event. Now in the create event, we're going to create a variable called my target. Set it as no one. This is obviously going to target either a minion or the player, whoever's closest uh, to the tower, and if it's within range as well. So now into the step event, we're going to say if my target is no one. So if we do not have a target currently, then um, yeah. So if the distance to object is if the distance to the power player is less than less than equal to twenty two hundred. Yep. I was about to say twenty sounds a bit sharp. Okay. Uh, then my target will equal. Um, the nearest par player, which, as we said earlier, will be either a minion or a player. No minions exist right now, so obviously we're just looking at the player. We then have to say, if instance exists, so if, if my target exists, come on, Lost, get your act together, what are you doing? <laughs> ah, there we go, yeah. Okay, so if instance exists, uh, the target, so if, if he's acquired a target, him being the tower, uh, then it'll check the distance again. Right. And it's saying if it's bigger than 200, and if fire is false, if it hasn't fired, uh, my target should be no one again. Yeah, there we go. Else, so uh, if anything other than that being true, so if you know distance to target is less than two hundred, 
if fire equals false, so if we haven't fired, then we'll set the alarm up. Uh, fire turns to true. And that's it for that. Now we'll go to the alarm. And we now we create the projectile. Um, yeah, create it right in the center of ourselves. And yeah, we're just going to create the projectile. Uh, oh yeah, and then set fire back to false so that the loop can continue. So then it'll keep checking if someone's in range, etc., etc. All right. So now to the uh, tower projectile. So we need my tower, and the only reason I'm doing this, um, the reason we're going to have a my tower variable is it's going to get obviously the tower that this projectile was fired from, and the reason we're doing that is so that um, we're going to get the target from the tower, right? So the, the the target the tower is specified to hit, we will just grab that from the tower, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Right, so we'll also create a variable called my target in here as well, um, and that is going to equal my tower, my target. Right, so the tower, my tower dot my target is the tower's variable, my target. Uh, point direction I think self explanatory it'll just get the direction between itself and the target and then you just set the image angle to the direction then it should be facing the target as soon as it comes out of the tower uh, into the step event we are just going to have a linear step um, to, the tar to my targets X and Y at a speed of five, and the reason we've said false there on check all is so that um, you know it will fire other things. So if you then hide behind a minion or whatever, it will still aim for you and come straight for you rather than stopping. Because uh, obviously these don't need to abide by sort of the pathing rules if you like, because then they're just going to hit yeah wherever you are. And this is then the collision event. So if place meeting X and Y. So the projectiles X and Y, and if it if it's meeting with the target, then it's going to destroy itself. We're going to program in damage here, um, very shortly because we're about to create health bars. I believe I think I do that in this video. Uh, hopefully I do. And I've just checked, and yes, we do uh, create the health bars and stuff in this episode. But first, we have a little demonstration to make sure the logic is on point, and you know it's all working as it should. So let's see. And yes, yes it does. Now something I forgot to do is I thought that I'd demonstrated in the image editor how to flip the image of this, but I guess I forgot to put that in there. Uh, so I'm sure you'll figure it out. It's not too difficult. It's It just says mirror or flip or something. I don't really remember, but yeah, I'm sure you'll find it. But yeah, as you can see, um, it's working just fine. Just, uh, yeah, exactly how we wanted it. Uh, so let's get damage and stuff working. Right then. So first of all, we need to open up uh, the, or uh, the warrior and we need to create a draw event. But first in the create event, just add HP equals 100. And then into the draw event, obviously draw self. And now we're going to draw the health bar. Um, didn't, everything I'm about to write in here I've, I've tested beforehand and this is kind of where I wanted it to be and it looks quite nice so um, yeah sometimes the way that I got these these numbers here was just by messing around with this so yeah obviously we start at x minus 30 uh, so obviously that's to the left that's the first x the y1 is where it starts so minus 70 remember minus y is higher so it's going to start higher up above the player uh, and obviously the other X plus 30 so you've got a 30 pi 60 pixel um, health bar from left to right obviously the tallness of it uh, the width length no yeah the width of it is uh, a bit shorter being like seven and yeah I'm here I'm seven pixels that was an era I'm just choosing the colors 
of the health bar. And also the true true that you see on the end there, sorry, the zero true true, the zero just means it goes from right to left. As in when you get hit, the damage will take off from, you know, it'll go from right to left. Uh, the true there is to show the back colour, and the, other tr the last true is to show uh, the border, I think. Just makes it look a little bit more distinguished. Uh, so now if we go into the projectile, I believe we're just going to program in the damage here. Very, It's a very simple job, this one. Yeah, we're just going to specify my target again. Dot HP minus equal to 10. So because we're specifying a variable now on my target, dot HP, that is going to have to exist on minions and everything now, or it will crash. I mean, obviously, we're going to anyway, right? But just for future reference for you guys, if, if you didn't sort of know that. So you have to make sure that when you specify my target, if there's any other things that can become my target, make sure they all have the HP variable or any variable you specify. So there we go, nice looking little health bar. And yeah, there we go, works perfectly. Now, as we code in like the minions and stuff, we might, we'll play around with the damage and all that sort of stuff and get it balanced and working nicely. And we'll add skills and stuff as well. We'll get proper AI, uh, yeah. But, so I'm gonna stop this uh, episode here, guys. Um, in the next one, we will. I'll, like I said, I'll add the full map, and we'll add towers in all of the correct locations throughout the map for both our side and the AI side. And then, at that point, I think we're about ready to program in the minions and potential. And I guess before that, we'll also program in like our ranged attack type thing before we do skills. Uh, but yeah. Thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you next time.